just does not have a clue on how to run it off. Luke Getsky should be fired. He should be fired today. I'll stand by you. My God. Bro, you got smoke. Welcome to Phase Fantasy Live with your host, Lonnie Z. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. This is Phase Fantasy Live, and it is our draft edition. We're going to talk about where to draft, how the draft looks, what Jake and I's philosophies are, and kind of how we draft, kind of go over some things like that. Along with me today is my partner, Jake Hansen. What's going on, Jake? How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How are you, Lonnie? I'm good. I'm good. We have been... Uh, Moving through it today, this is our fourth show that we are taping today, and we're going to have these episodes all out for you this week. You will get the running backs, you will get the wide receivers, and you will get the tight ends. We've already done those shows, and now we're going to go into some draft strategy. So draft strategy, uh, like I told you, um, Jake, and one of my drafts, I have the first overall pick. And before I even found out that I had that pick or anything, uh, we know Christian McCaffrey's calf is, you know, bothering him. Um, and for a running back, anytime a leg or something is bothering a running back, it, it throws up red flags. But before that, I was looking at a stat that showed that he's been very, very active over the past few seasons. He's had over 300 touches. You know, and probably more than that, because because you those are official touches, receptions, running the ball, you know, those types of things like that. But he's getting hit on every play and all that. And one once a a a running back gets to a certain amount of these, getting back to back four hundred touches in a season, or or higher three nineties in a season, you know, a, a decline comes. And historically, the numbers are that. So that that is what was bothering me with McCaffrey. I know that he's a stud. And I know in most drafts, it's going to go like Christian McCaffrey, CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, Amon Ron St. Brown, Bijan, Brees, Justin Jefferson, AJ, Garrett Wilson, you know, Jonathan Taylor, Jameer Gibbs, you know, kind of like that, something like that in, in these drafts. 10 to 12 man drafts. Um, but that's that's my dilemma. You know, I don't know. Normally, I would go running back, receiver, receiver, running back, kind of, you know, would be kind of my strategy. But the way this the, the teams play this now, you kind of have to flop it up. What What are you thinking the first round should look like in most people's PPR, we're, we'll talk about mostly PPR drafts. What do you think the first round should look like? I think it's pretty I think it's pretty much the same thing every year, to be honest. But I think this year we're having a little issue on running backs. I don't see the the uh, same go-to guys like I was talking to you uh, when we had our rankings of, of one guy being the man. I think there's only a couple of them, of, 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 of running backs. Like, uh, like uh, my strategy is, is always running back. So, if you're the sixth pick, and this happened to me, this, so if you're like the first three, you want to get the best player, and uh, usually it's the running back. Like, uh, you want a top running back. And then, like I'm saying with you, Lana, you're number one. If you miss out on the running back on the first pick, it doesn't have to be McCaffrey, it could be Brees Hall. But let's say you miss out on both those guys, you're going to be coming around 23, 23 turns coming back at you and those top 10 that you had on your list might not be there you should have a couple you should have a couple but your top eight is gone your top seven is gone like your top five is gonna be gone the first round for sure you know uh, 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 on a 12 man on a 12 man league your top six or seven is gonna be gone like i was in a league last year and what i'm saying is like i was picked number four and three running backs went in a row, and I was just looking there like, uh, no. So I picked Justin Jefferson, number four, and he got hurt and all that. So that just kind of flopped on me. That wasn't nobody else's fault, but he got hurt. But And then another league, I picked Nick Chubb, three, 
if I didn't if I didn't get Nick Chubb, I looked back and I seen like I picked like uh, my second running back was Jamar Gibbs. This year, second round, okay, you'd be happy. But last year, he wasn't even a top fifteen running back. He was a new guy, and I had to pick him second because if I didn't, I would have had nobody. It would have been really rough. So, like to me, like I always think I need to get running backs first, unless you're like number eight or number nine, and they're in CD Lamb or. I hate. I doubt they will be there, but let's say I'm on St. Brown and, J- and Jamar Chase is there at number seven, and you're already at like your next running back's probably Kyrie Williams. It's just it's kind of a flip, you know. You got to think like, well, what would you rather have? You know, a number top three receiver or a top eight running or a between a five and an eight running back, you know, or five and a ten. So it's hard. It's hard because if let's say you're number twelve and let's say you just get two top ten running, I mean you could maybe you might be able to get the the last two running backs, like the nine and ten, you know, like a Barkley and Gibbs or a A Chan and Barkley or Jacobs and Barkley. That's not bad at all, but you might be dropping on running backs to, or on receivers though. It's like you said before. It's like like uh, what did you ask me? You asked me would I rather have two okay running back or one good running back and an okay running back and an okay receiver or a good running back and a good receiver. That's what you asked me earlier. And it's kind of, I don't know. I think I'm okay with two okay running backs and a, or one good running back, a okay running back and an okay receiver. I think I'm looking that way unless I'm the fourth pick and the three running backs are gone and I got CD Lamb sitting there or Tyreek Hill or J- Justin Jefferson. Of course, I'm going to have to get one of them. I'm going to have to. And and a lot of people this this year are saying that if you miss out on one of those receivers, they want one of those great receivers, you know. Um so they so in the first round that's who they're going to go for. Um I don't know. I found historically the running backs so much harder to keep healthy and, and and filled all year long. Receivers, you got guys coming off the waiver wire, you got guys coming out of nowhere, you got rookies who all of a sudden make you're like Man, waiver wire week three, you're like, hey, this rookie's still out there. No one's got him yet, and he's up and coming. I remember when Odell came up. I got him early on the waiver wire, and then I had a stud the rest of the year. You know, people were offering Calvin Johnson in a trade for Odell back then, you know, Megatron. Um, And so, yeah, it's – I think you got to have the running back. You have to. For me, the question would be – if I'm going to, if I know, and, and see this, this is all about draft strategy. So what we, we said something last, last episode, the names, everyone just lives off these names, you know, and what people who don't really, aren't really, I don't know, versed at fantasy football or, or, or don't really take it too seriously or, or whatever the novice, they just go, they, they'll print up a sheet. It's the ADP and they'll just follow that ADP pretty much. Or they'll listen to some podcasts kind of like ours or someone else's, or they'll go to ESPN and they'll be like, oh, I got a draft. I, you know, it says that Jamar Chase should be the third pick overall or fourth pick overall, or Tyreek should be the second, or, you know, or Amon Ron, he, he, if he's there at five, I got to take him. You have to set your strategy. How do you want to build your team? And if I want to build my team, I want a stud running back and I'm not, I'm not, you know, jiving with McCaffrey because I think he's going to get hurt this year and just a gut, you know, gut feeling because a lot of it's gut. Then I would have to go get unconventional. I'd have to go take Brees Hall or one of those guys, Bijan Robinson first overall, if I wanted one of those guys on and I had the first pick and that's hard for people to do because they're like the ADP, everything. And these guys are going to think I'm an idiot if I've, this, they say that he should be drafted six. So I'm going to take him first. I don't care about all that. I want to take who I want to take because I want to build my team the way. If I want a Tyler Murray, I mean a Kyler Murray and a Mark Mc, and a Trey McBride stack, then when they come and I know this is the only shot I got to get one of those guys, I got to take them there because I'm building my team the way I want to. You know, do you is that how you kind of approach it, or do sometimes you just kind of let the draft come to you you know what i'm saying because our our plans get messed up a lot with these guys who don't you know who are drafting no i think you always have a plan like that i think you always like in your first thought of your mind you're gonna stack 
like to try to you know but but like my first thought in my mind i try to put in my head is don't let the draft fool you don't let it fool you don't get the quarterback at three don't do it or don't get the quarterback under five rounds when you're thinking in your head i'm gonna get one at seven or eight i'm going to do it i'm not going to change my mind but then that pick and the other pick and the other one that some that teams are picking and they just ruined your whole draft because in your mind you're like oh shh, oh, oh 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 all those quarterbacks are gone by five like whoa 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 i always put like three quarterbacks in my queue the first thing right when i get on to draft there's there's always a queue espn nfl um yahoo there's always a queue for everybody the first thing i do is i put my three quarterbacks in there first thing i do Boom, boom, boom. I go to quarterbacks, I put them in, and then I go to my running backs, and I pick who I want. Like, if I'm first pick, I already know what I'm getting. But if I'm top five, okay, I put five running backs that I want. Doesn't matter what pick it is. I put the top five running backs I want, and then if that guy's there, he's he's mine. So but I always put three quarterbacks in my queue, and I put them there, and then I look around the fourth round, see if they're still there. If they're not, Because I try not to look and see who's getting picked. I try not to let to, that ruin me because a lot of guys, they watch every pick and what they're going on top. I'm actually just still, I'm still looking at my, I'm, I'm looking the whole time when I'm drafting, I'm looking through players. I'm not sitting there watching who's getting picked. And I know that's what guys do. Like, you know, like I, I'll write everything down on a piece of paper and I'll have everything written down of who I want on that position. And when that position, and then when I know that position's up for me, like, okay, I need a running back or, or, or okay, let's say I need a quarter. A, a, a wide receiver. Let's say you already got your one receiver, your and your two running backs, or whatever, and you need that second receiver. I go right to my list and I look and I start looking like right for the rounds up, and I just like, okay, he's my guy, and I have a guy right under him. And if he's gone, I, I don't change it up. I don't let the draft change me. I want who I want, and I do try to get stacks. I do like like I'll get a quarterback and I'll go okay. I want that receiver. I'll put him in there and then see what happens. If it don't go, I don't change my quarterback. I don't change it. I'm not going to change it if, let's say I wanted, uh, I'll just say two players. That's not going to happen this year. But let's say I wanted a Aaron Rodgers and a Garrett Wilson stack. And Garrett Wilson gets drafted at five when I was going to get, you know, when Rodgers, you're not going to get Rodgers at six. That's stupid. Rodgers is going to go all the way down, right? I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to get Rodgers. I mean, if, if that's my quarterback that I wanted, I, you know, nobody's going to do that. But this is just an example. You know, I mean, there's not really any, pa- like like I would say, like a Josh Allen and Diggs, but that's over with. But Or like a Stafford and Nakua, you know, like I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to change it. If that's my, because I pick my quarterback first and then I'll look, okay, I'll stack them. But like my quarterback's my first thing I look at when I start. Like first thing, I pick three, put them in my queue. And I'm not picking like Josh Allen because I know he's going to be gone in the first three rounds. I'm not picking Mahomes. I never try to get those guys. I never do. Because if you know, because if you look at like percentages of, of guys that win, not n- not a lot of them have the top top quarterback. Yeah, because w- with fantasy football, uh, it, it's always nice, you know, to have that top, the big name quarterback and running back. But really where you win your leagues – are the knowledge of those middle rounds where you can pick up guys to fill your lineup up with, you know, like, um, you know, receivers are great for that because receivers, they come and go and and they, they boom and bust, you know, and sometimes you can have a real no name receiver that like Puka Nakua, no one, I guarantee no one knew about this kid. And, and it took a while for people to start picking them up off the waiver wire because they were like, oh, that was lucky. Oh, that was lucky. By the third week he's doing this, they're like, no, no, no. I'm taking this guy. You know, I'll take a chance on that luck. Well, that's that's the thing about this year. This thing this year's changing everything. It's probably changing you too. Because the running backs, there's there's not a rookie running back this year that you could go, I'm gonna get him in the sixth round. Nobody's gonna get him. And like I did a couple years ago with Brees Hall, I picked Brees Hall. He was going freaking off, and then he blew his knee out. Last year was Gibbs and and, and Bajon, but a uh, Gibbs, but a uh, Bajon went early, but a uh, Gibbs, I got him late. And this year, there's not that. So now you have to go. Oh crap! Everything is just going to get thrown right at you, and 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 they're going to go, 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 go. There ain't there ain't a player that you're going to be like, you know what? 
I know this running back's not going to be, or this running back's going to be there at seven and eight or six, six and eight. I know he's going to be there. I'll just hold up. I'll get some guys. But now there ain't that. No. And and so what I would. Like Jonathan Brooks, you're not going to pick a Jonathan Brooks at eighth round, or you're not going to get a Trey Benson because Connor's a starter. So it's hard this year because you might have to get a Hubbard at seven and be, oh, crap. Yeah, if you do that, you're not winning. Here we go. But, yeah. I know. But, But, yeah, I know what you're saying. there isn't a rookie running back that's going to, you know, that's going to be starting that you could just throw in there. There's not. Yeah, so that's why it's going to be important for you to have a real plan going into your draft. You have to have a plan, and you have to be able to maneuver through the draft on the fly. Uh, So you have to have, like, like what I'll do is I'll have my top 10 wide receivers that I, that I would want on my team and my top five running backs that I would want on my team and, you know, my top really like three quarterbacks because usually you can get a quarterback, especially if you're not going for that big name quarterback because there's a lot of like if you wait around, you can get Kirk Cousins in the 11th round. You know, he might not even get drafted in some leagues. You know, if you're waiting on, on a quarterback, but I'm just saying, so you, I always put together that type of a list and this way, like you, when they start coming off, if, if that guy's available him, because there's certain guys I want to just have on my team. I just know that this year, because of his situation, because of the way he moved from this team to that team or whatever, he should have a big year this year. Uh, okay. One of these hidden guys on my list this year that I want on my team. And I shouldn't even tell you because we're going to have a draft (laughs) Sunday and we're in the same league. I want Chase Brown. I want Chase Brown on my team, period. Whether I get him late or whatever, I want Chase Brown. And if you draft Chase Brown, I'm going to block you from the league. So there you go because I'm the commissioner. So, (laughs) But Chase, to to me, yeah, Chase Brown from Cincinnati. Because I don't believe in Zach Moss. I don't believe Zach Moss is going to be carrying that RB1. And Chase Brown showed a lot of promise last year. No, Chase Brown last year, I thought, yeah, I actually picked up Chase Brown yeah. after uh, Mixon got hurt. So he's one guy that if I'm looking and I'm I'm hurting at the running back in the fifth, sixth round, he's probably still going to be there. That's when I have to snatch him because he won't be there much longer after that. But – if, if I have everything set up and I need another running back, I'll take a chance. I'll take a Chase Brown. So, you know, you got to have these strategies. And so with me going with the number one overall pick, uh, consensus would say McCaffrey, but I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm looking at three guys. I'm looking at McCaffrey. I have till Monday to figure this out. McCaffrey, and the good thing, we have weekend games, so we could see if anyone gets injured between the, now and then, but none of them are going to play. McCaffrey, Brees, Jefferson, Tyreek. Those would be the four guys I would consider at that number one slot. And I know why you don't want Jefferson. Totally understand and get it. Totally do. Um, but that would be my strategy. And i probably go in the fourth round and get my tight end. I'm if I'm fourth round. Yeah, but if I'm picked, but, but let's say I'm picking six. I think in most drafts, Jefferson is going to be there. I'll be honest. I really think so. I, I, I wish we would have had a draft by now, but and maybe we could talk after, on Tuesday because that's when all my drafts are done. Actually, Wednesday. I have I have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So, And then maybe we could talk on Tuesday, have a, have a little pod at night just to see how we did on our drafts, you know. Um, but uh, I really think Jefferson is going to go probably by five or six. I would not be surprised. Because of that, of that reason, Donald. Honestly, and hey, I'm not. Hey, I won't be mad if I'm if I'm six or seven, and McCaffrey, Taylor, and Robinson are going to be gone, and Brees Hall, they're going to be gone. They're going to be. I, I'd be surprised. I remember last year in that league, man, eight running backs were gone by in twelve picks. Eight running backs were gone in the first round, and the Mahomes was gone, and Josh Allen, and I think it was like that. I think those two quarterbacks were gone in the first round, and uh, one of my leagues, and. And it's just like, I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, guys get scared. You know, they think they, they, think they need that best quarterback. But, um, and look, people like big names. It's like me and Lonnie were talking about if you, uh, when you guys watch our uh, rankings, it's a lot of people go by names. 
Like Caleb Williams might go top three because his name is Caleb Williams. Jaden Daniels might go top ten because his name is Jaden Daniels. And 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 uh, sorry to say, like Patrick Mahomes always goes one. Every draft I draft in, pretty much Patrick Mahomes is gone in the first round. If any quarterback is gone, it's pretty much Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen uh, lately, or or Patrick Mahomes is going number thirteen on the turn or fourteen on the turn. So if you want to go by names, it's like I have a guy. His name I'm not gonna say his name, but uh, he runs uh, one of our leagues, and he him and w- 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 one of his kids are in the league, and their names people. One is a Cowboys fan and one's a Dolphins fan. Well, the Cowboys fan, you know, first if if she's picking top three, it's it's CD Lamb's gone, right? Okay, but let's say CD Lamb's not there at seven. They're they're picking Dak Prescott, and then the other guy, he's he picks Patrick Mahomes every year, and he finishes bottom to twelve every year. He's like he's last every year because he just goes by names. And like my strategy, you, I never go by ranking. I never go by like the computer. That's the computer. Like whoever's there, they just pick. Whoever's there, they just pick. They don't go down. Like I don't. Like, that's why like my grades are always low because I don't pick who scored five, eight touchdowns last year or ten touchdowns. That's why I I pick who I think is going to do good this year. I don't do the name thing, and sometimes that puts you in a bind. Big time That's because true. then you know because if I said I'm getting the best I'm getting the biggest name Patrick Mahomes and then I got two shitty running backs and receivers because I picked the best <laughs> quarterback. Yeah, I think this I'm year being honest is like you know it, it's going to be real it, important. It's a running back league, man. It's a running back league, man. It really is, and it has been for the last three years. The uh, only thing about this year, it's going to be tougher on running backs because they don't have. Big running backs coming out. I mean, you're going to have to use an early round to pick a running back that's not even going to play. See, and that's that's where I I that's where I struggle like because a, I don't know, so. I don't think it's just a running back mm-hmm. league. I think they're scarce, but this is a wide receiver league, and I think you can carry your team better with better wide well, yeah, receivers can, because the chances right. of you getting an elite running back are really scarce. So all this whole zero, I'm not a zero RB guy. I never have been. But sometimes you can end up just because of where your position in the draft, you could damn near end up a zero RB team because wherever you're drafting and the, and the running backs are gone. Like you're saying, it's RB league, meaning that they draft all the running backs first because there's well, not enough of them. Well, but the game's I'm being like played. I'm not worried about receivers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the game's being. But I'm not worried about not getting the top ten receiver at all. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not worried about getting the top ten. I could get two top ten running backs or two top twelve running backs, and I guarantee I, I will get two two of the top twenty receivers. I will. It might not be the receivers that I wanted, but it's going to be a, a Mari Cooper or a or a uh, Devonte Adams a. a Pittman Jr. Like I will get Pittman Jr. You know he's a twenty-something ranked ranked receiver, and I'm okay with having Olave and Pittman Jr. as my two receivers with Jonathan Taylor and a Jamar Gibbs. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's a balanced team if you can get that. Like I don't use you know if I could get yeah. that, but I think I can get that. Yeah, I think I can. The way that people draft though. You just never know, but that's why we're talking well, about. That's what I'm it. saying, though, because people they people help you out sometimes. They, they do don't know what they're doing. Exactly, exactly. Honest to God, truth. So, if you have any final words for everyone out there about how to approach a draft, what would you say to like just the the guy going into his draft? What advice would you give him? Don't go off your. Don't go off of what you want. Just like you said, Lana, you know who you want. Don't go off of, don't change it because somebody else changes the draft for you. It happens every year. Somebody gets somebody that you're just shocked. And it's going to happen this year with Caleb Williams. I guarantee it. You, Caleb Williams is going to get drafted early and it's going to make you freak out because, oh no, because quarterbacks are going to go. <laughs> and it happens every year. Don't get off your draft board. Don't get it off it. If you want Reese Hall number one, Lonnie, get Reese Hall number one. Get him. Don't change it. Uh, yeah, I I, I agree. Yeah, you can't go off of your plan. You know what I mean? And because people will start drafting tight ends in the second round, then all of a sudden someone else. And when that it happens, I, I love when that happens because then my guy's dropping yeah. to me, you know? <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Well, it gets irritating though, because it gets yeah. irritating though, because you had a guy that you're like, okay, he's going in the seventh round. I know we. I mean, he's there's no way, and also he's gone in the third. Like, there's times that I, that I'm starting to look around the fifth round of, to start adding guys in my queue because I'll add a certain amount of guys when I first start, or right before I start, and then around the fourth, fifth round, I'll start adding my late guys. And sometimes I'm going, hey, where the where the frick, where did he go? And it's like, whoa, he got drafted third round. I don't watch the draft board. I don't. I don't watch who gets picked. I don't because I'm making sure I'm getting my guys lined up and, and that's what I'm drafting. You know, like sometimes, you know, you hear that, you know, you're looking sometimes, but like I am just on my guys. I don't look on their guys. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. And if, if they're out of your queue, that means they're gone. You know, if they end up they're out gone. of your queue, they're, they're not there. So yeah, it, it keeps gone. you, it keeps you your strategy just like running. I mean, to be honest, it is. It's true. Running backs are going to be tough this year. It's really going to be tough. It is. It is. There's not. There's not those secret guys like you said, Chase Brown. There's a couple guys down there. There's that Jalen Wright that 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 they're talking about a lot. I was just looking at a lot, a lot. They're talking about Jalen Wright big yeah. time, mm -hmm. and that could be a stash in case one of the guys get hurt with H. Chan yep. and uh, Mostert. Yep. Jeff Wilson Jr. is not going to make the team as of right now. I've seen he's probably not going to make the team, but he could go somewhere else. Um. But there's not a lot. It's like a Rashawn Stevenson from New England. And, I mean, there's a lot of guys that you're like, oh, man, he's my starting running back. But that's what it looks like this year, especially when Nick Chubb hurt. Yeah. It's pretty much taking a running back from you. Exactly. Like uh, You can get forward from Cleveland, but, you know, I mean, you are you are going to have to. It's like Alani said earlier, well, are you comfortable with taking Chubb early? Well, we just did that, and Chubb was gone in the fifth round. You're going to have to take Chubb and just eat it. You're going to have to eat it. And just hope he comes back. You know, and is is you're going to have to and take Chubb for a position that you really need. Be honest. With even you. if Nick Chubb comes back and is half the player than he has been in the past, mm -hmm. he's still going to be better than most of the running backs, <laughs> fantasy running backs in the league. Mm -hmm. And the way that Stefanski uses his offense and uses Nick Chubb, you know, he's a, a, a healthy stash. I mean, if you can, if you have, I'm going to ask you something right. I'm going to ask you right now. Yeah before we end it because we're pretty much mm -hmm. done what's your five players what's your five that you're going to be happy after your draft on monday honestly quarterback two re two running backs two receivers that's it all right so what's your happy five so if i'll, I'll be happy <laughs> if i had um like a kyler murray a trey mcbride uh if i you know and and if I can get um, Devin A. Chan, and I'm just thinking realistically, if if, if these could fall no, to I me, know. you know, no, I know that's what I'm saying. That's and, what I'm saying. You're uh, not naming like top guys. And let's say, let's say, because depending on where I draft in the first round, and I'm not going to say I got the first pick. Okay, wherever I could draft, if mm -hmm. I had say a um, uh, one top player, you could put one top player in there. You got to put a one top five. Yeah. So so. So five, say JJ, five. Justin Jefferson, and then okay. then the last one would be uh one more uh receiver. If it could be something like a um if I ended up with like a Diggs or a cause he might fall an Olave or something like that. I, I probably wouldn't be happy with Olave, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, but but something like that. As your starting receiver? So I I'm going for like like I'm going for because I Get 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 quarterbacks late. Like I really want CJ Stroud, and if CJ Stroud is there seven, like he's mine. But like I'm gonna be more realistic in a way. Like I'm gonna go Jordan Love as my quarterback. I'm gonna go as a running back because I'm picking running back first. It doesn't it doesn't fucking matter unless I'm picking nine and all the running backs are gone and I got to get a receiver. But in my world, I, in my world, I'm going after a John Robinson or a, a Jonathan Taylor. Okay, so let's say a, a uh, Jonathan Taylor. And then I'll be happy if I have a Etienne or a Zamir White. To be honest, that's my starting. So I'll take Zamir White. I'm I'll be happy with Zamir White. And then my receiver as a AJ Brown and a Michael Pittman Jr. I'll be happy. Yeah, you're on Pittman, and and probably my my guy really is probably Brees. If I if I if I'm just searching myself right now. And thinking because every year, every year, there's one guy that I really want on my team. One guy, at least one that I really like. like my the main guy. Yep, it'd probably Brees be Brees this year, man. And the only way I can get him is how? 
I'd have to pick him first, huh? First. And my main guy is Jonathan. Like, my main guy, because I don't think I'll be top two, I think my main guy is Jonathan Taylor. Like, Jonathan Taylor. Like, Pittman Jr., when I say Pittman Jr., I could wait until round six. But then that will – and then if that bites if that bites me, I'm going to be pissed off because I really wanted him. And it happens sometimes. You want a guy, but you don't want to pick him too early. But sometimes you just do it because you wanted him, like you said. Like, Brees Hall, you have to pick him first round. You have to. You can't. You can't go, oh, I'm going to wait till second. Oh, I'm going to wait till pick 13. You can't. You have to get him. If he's there for some reason at the turn, it doesn't, give, it doesn't matter. You have to get him. But, like, I'll be happy if I have a Jordan Love or even stack him with, like, a Reed or something like that. I, you know, like, I'll be happy with that. That's not a bad stack. That's not a bad stack at all. Uh, but all right. you're right. If you don't get a, a, if you don't get an elite running back in the first round, then you're not getting one. But you could still catch light in a bottle. Someone could turn out, emerge this season, but you have better chance playing that game with the receiver than you do a running back. Well, like I said you to know, you, if you if you don't pick a running back first, and it doesn't have to be McCaffrey because he's hurt. Yeah. If you yeah. pick Hall, but let's say you don't pick one of those and you pick Justin Jefferson, mm -hmm. your running back is going to be Zach Moss. Or yeah. And then and then if I pick Zit Jefferson in this situation and say Darnold does not do well, now I don't really have an elite wide receiver uh -huh. anymore because Darnold ain't doing nothing, and I don't have a a, a real RB1. If you don't, period. you might have a chance to get like a Josh Jacobs and a Zemir White at the turn at 23. You might have a chance for Josh Jacobs and Zemir White. I think you will. Or a Monron, say, uh, not a Monron, or a... Uh, uh hn devin hn may be there mm, around know. there maybe i mean you might have a chance at elvin kamara i bet you have a chance at elvin kamara but i know but that's what i mean look if at this your was top four 10 years ago backs. i'd be look excited at, <laughs> look at your top 10 running backs you really think they're gonna be there in 23 picks your top 10 running backs do you really think they'll be there in 23 picks no freaking way there's no way there's no no way. uh but I want to see I want to see what this this ADP has at PPR scoring, and I'm going PPR because these are PPR <clears throat> leagues that I'm in. Um, top ten running backs from this partic particular consensus, Devin Achan is ten, and so you're right, top ten, he's ten. So yeah, he'll be gone. Derrick Henry's eleven. Rashad White. 12 Kamara, you know, but see, that's going to be the guys that you like. You didn't want with Rashad White and Derrick Henry, you didn't want Derrick Henry. Nope. That's why if uh, Derrick Henry, I, main, I would take, I would take Derrick Henry. I would, too. I would take him before Rashad White for sure. For sure. That's but the then thing you got if you get your running back, you don't have to worry too much. You, then you can get your yeah. receiver and then you could jump back to your running back. Cause I think, I think if I took, say, a Brees or a Christian, right? And then come into the turn, go to my wide receivers. If if I had to take a Chase Brown to go with Brees, or, I would rather take that chance and have a, a really good wide receiver. Or on that turn, if A Chan or someone was available, maybe a Cooks, you know, a, a James Cook. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like that, and I bet you, you that's know. what's going to happen. And I bet you that's what's going to happen. Okay, you take Brees Hall, and when it comes back around, you're going to have a probably Devontae Adams, maybe a Garrett Wilson, a DJ Moore, maybe Cooper Cup, maybe a Pittman Jr. Mm -hmm. And you get and then I'll have two picks there. And, and then you get James Cook from Buffalo. I'll yeah, bet you your other running back. I'll bet you lunch that James Cook is there at number 24. All right, we're betting lunch. Where are we going? Wherever you want. <laughs> okay. No, James Cook's going to be there. I mean, come on, Lonnie. James Cook's going to be there at 24. He's going to be there. Because people are going to get quarterbacks. People are going to get freaked out and get, like, I bet you three quarterbacks are gone by the time you pick second. Probably two. And then and, and there's going to be, Kelsey's going to be gone. Don't be surprised of the port. I hope not. But Kelsey's going to be gone because his name. Mahomes, Josh Allen's going to be gone. And I bet you you're going to be looking at, like, Cooks and Barkley, maybe Etienne and Jr., Zamir White at number 23, 24. You will have, like, a Pittman Jr. chance. I mean, oh, you might even have, like, DJ Moore, Cooper Cup chance. Hey, what do you think about Kenneth Walker this year, man? We haven't talked about him. I like, I like Kenneth, Kenneth Walker, Walker, but then but, uh, around but that like turn, not talking about him at all either. But yeah, Kenneth Walker too. 
I'm hearing more about Charbonnet than I am Walker. I'm hearing about more Charbonnet too. But Walker's healthy. Yeah. It could Seattle's be the coaching. Been really quiet. It could be the, the coach. Yeah. Walker still, bro. He might be a, a, a draft steal this year, bro. He Nick really Jigma might Smith, be. Smith, they're talking about Nick Jigma Smith a lot. Yeah, because, you know, it, it, in the fourth tier, they have Walker, they have Ramondre, Aaron Jones. J you know, James Conner, I wouldn't be feel be, be mad if I had an elite running back and a James Conner with them. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe an elite and a Aaron Jones. You know, I wouldn't be mad at that. So... We'll see how it all plays out. I'm Lonnie. He is Jake. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you on the next one.